In this screencast, I want to talk about the relationship between Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem. It turns out that these two things are very closely related and give us some insight into how combinations work and some of the identities that hold for combinations. So if you remember, Pascal's triangle works like this. You write down a 1, and then you write down a 1, 1 in a line before it, on either side of the original one. And then you create a triangle with numbers in it. Now, how, does the, how are the numbers placed in the triangle? You look above a given position, and you take the number directly above but to the left and add it to the number directly above and to the right. If there's no number directly above it to the left, then you just assume that number is 0. So, for instance, this 6, we get 6 from by adding this 3, to this 3 and get this 6. The 4 comes from adding this 1 to this 3 gives 4. 10 comes from this 4 to this 6. Now, the goal here is to show that, in fact, Pascal's triangle is really the binomial coefficients, where the row right, is, is denoted by the top number here, and that's how many, what the power is that x plus y is being raised to. So the second row, third row, fourth row, and of course the zeroth row to just get us started. And so where are we going with this? We're going to show that binomial coefficient 4, 2 is the sum of binomial coefficient 3, 1 and binomial coefficient 3, 2. Now, from a subset perspective, this means that all the two the number of two element subsets of a set of size four is equal to the sum of the number of one element subsets of size three plus the number of two element subsets of a set of size three. So remember from the last screencast, the binomial theorem basically says if you have two terms and you're raising that sum to the nth power, then you can get that by using the binomial coefficients, which is just another name for the combinations of k things taken from a set of n elements. You can use this binomial coefficient and then just multiply by the terms, x to the k, y to the n minus k. So the point is you can go from this simple way to express x plus y to the n, and you can expand it out into all the different terms. So on this side, let's look and see where the binomial coefficients come from in term from a different perspective. Namely, we're going to look at a specific example here, x plus y to the fourth, and we're going to see where these coefficients come from in terms of the expansion from x plus y cubed and then, of course, what we need to do to get x plus y to the fourth is multiply that by x plus y. So if we rewrite this in terms of the binomial coefficients, right, of the expansion for x plus y cubed, this is what we get. should stop here and pause and make sure you understand where everything's coming from. Then we multiply this out. So when we multiply the binomial expansion of x plus y cubed out by x, this is what we get. Okay, And we multiply it by y, this is what we get. Now, just like you did in multi-digit multiplication, learning that in fourth grade, we do the same thing here. We just take the terms that we got from x and the, by multiplying by x and the terms we got by multiplying by y, and then we're going to add them together. Now, what I wrote down here was not those sums, but the expression you get when you apply the binomial theorem to x plus y to the fourth. So we know that this is one way, perfectly good way, to get the expansion of x plus y to the fourth. And by adding these coefficients is another way. So the sum, for example, of binomial coefficient 2, 3 plus binomial coefficient 3, 3 must be equal to binomial coefficient 4, 3. And you can see that throughout. 
Take a look at this and see if you can see the pattern. Pause the screencast for just a second. So if you look at this, you can see the pattern basically is to get, say, binomial coefficient 4, 3, what you need to do is reduce the 4 by 1, so get 3 and 3, and then look at the number of things in the bottom part of the binomial coefficient and take the same number and then 1 minus the number and add them together. So that's exactly what this is. If this was four, four, binomial coefficient 4, 3, and this is binomial coefficient 3, 3, and binomial coefficient 3, 2. It turns out that this identity holds and is called Pascal's identity. So there's another way to sort of get at Pascal's identity, and that's to take a subset viewpoint. So we're going to forget all about binomial expansions here for a second, and we're going to focus on our old perspective that the number of combinations of k thing, taking k things from n things, or another way to say that, the number of subsets of size k from a larger set of size n elements is written CNK. So if any, because CNK and binomial coefficient NK are the same, we better be able to show Pascal's identity to be true from a subset point of view. So let's see how this would work. Let's take a set of size n and then pick out an element. We'll call it A. Just So we're just going to call one of the elements A and we're going to remove it from the set A. And that'll give us a set called B of size n minus 1 with one less element. Now, let's count all the subsets of size B that are of size K from B. So that what would that be? That's going to be taking k things from n minus 1 things. Okay, again, that's a number of subsets of size k from a set of size n minus 1. These subsets, they're subsets of b, so they must also be subsets of a, but they're subsets of a that do not have the element a in them. But they are all subsets of a of size k, but just the ones that don't have a in them. Well, that's some of the subsets we're looking for. Can we get the rest of them? Well, now let's count all the subsets of size k minus 1 from b. That's going to look like the number of ways we can take k minus 1 things out of n minus 1 things. And now we take those subsets, and we've got room for one more. Well, what are we going to put in there? We're going to put in a. So now we're going to get all the subsets of how big are those subsets going to be? They're all going to be of size k. They all have k elements. And they're all subsets of a because they were subsets of b and we just added a to them, little a. And so now we've got all the subsets of capital A, those without a, and we got that from all the combinations of taking k things from n minus 1, and those with a. And we got that from all the subsets of taking k minus 1 things from n minus 1 things. It's pretty easy to see these two sets are disjoint because the, the ones here have a in them. The ones here don't have a in them, so they can't have any of the same subsets in them. And by the sum rule, then we get that the, set, the, the number of subsets of size k from a set of size n is basically equal to the number of subsets of size k from a set n minus 1 plus the number of subsets of size k minus 1 from n minus 1. So again, this is just Pascal's identity from a different perspective. So finally, just a little practice here for you to reinforce these idea, the ideas. Consider all the subsets of size 3 from a 5-element set. So there I wrote them all down here. There's 10 of them. Now, for you, what are the subsets of size 3 from the set B, C, D, E? So we're going to drop the A, just like we did on the previous slide. Now, there should be, what do we want? We want size 3 from 4 elements, so that's going to be C4, 3. And if you calculate that out, that's going to be 4. So you should be able to find 4 subsets of size 3 from there. 
Then, what are the subsets of size 2 from B, C, D, and E? We should be able to write those down. And there should be six of them. Now, take these elements of size 2 that we got from here, add A to them, to each one of those subsets, and then convince yourself that the four sets we got from here and the six sets we got down here with an A added to them give you the ten sets that we have up here.